and a very special guest speaker this morning. Um, and we actually have Edgar and Amber from Mexico, and they're here with us. And so in just a moment, I'm going to ask them to please come up. And uh, they're going to share, give us an update, and then Edgar is going to preach the Word of God to us today. Are you guys excited about that? Oh, yeah. Woo! Wonderful. So before we bring Edgar up and Amber, please focus your attention to the screen.
sure. That was the biggest build we have ever done. <laughs> and uh, it was supposed, usually we can do a house like in three to four days. And that one was how many? Five or six? Five? I don't know. You guys know. It hey. seemed like an eternity, I'm We're sure. Because <laughs> <those lanes there. laughs> it was almost double the size of our typical home. And they worked so hard. So when they came back all bruised and battered, they were telling the truth, okay? Because this was, that was an intense build. And it's just special how Praise has been a part of really investing not only money, but prayers and sweat and blood. I'm sure there was blood involved there. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, the reason we have this Thanksgiving thing is because we've, we've seen um, being in Durango, it's a, it's a city that's a little bit harder to get to than Mazatlan, where we used to be. And we've seen a bit of difficulty with teams coming down and building with us. Um, has definitely been one of our challenges. Um, there, you know, sometimes the flights might be like 30 hours because there's so many layovers that you're taking on the way to get down there and stuff. And so um, we decided that maybe a, a, the, the Homes of Hope team was praying and said, what do we do? What do we do if we can't build with teams coming down? Uh, because 10 out of 10 teams that were programmed last year, only praise ended up being the ones to plow through all the difficulties and get there. And so, um, yeah, you guys got, you got pioneers here who are willing to, to sacrifice. And, and so in that, we said, well, why don't we start raising local funds and, uh, and people from, from the states as well who can invest into a house but not necessarily have to go and build. Uh, we have lots of, uh, God has given such favor in the city and so many people who uh, are a part of what is going on down there, people who want to, who always tell us, if there's anything that you need, uh, you know, I'll jump in. The I, I know with praise coming down, we even had uh, people giving food for the meals to be able to make it happen. And um, it's been neat to see like the local people come around us and be a, a part of making, um, making effort for what God wants to do there. And so we, uh, we were looking at using people who can give uh, a little bit at a time, just a little bit to be a part of a Thanksgiving build and then we would build it down there. Anyway, that has all changed because uh, there's not much uh, news about it here, but in Mexico, the earthquakes that have happened, it's crazy the things that have happened and the, the desolation that has been for so many families. In Mexico City, um, there's a lot of help going there, but in the southern states, actually you guys are part of something in Oaxaca, right? Um, in Oaxaca, Chiapas, down south in Mexico, there's not so much help going down there. And so right now, our, part of our team, part of our staff is down there uh, scouting out to see how we can be a part of helping rebuild some of Oaxaca. And that'll be a bit of a focus over the, till the end of the year. And so in the end, we're not doing the Thanksgiving build. Um, but something we want to invite you guys to be a part of, uh, probably starting next year, we got to kind of see the process in it. But we want to extend the chance for you to give $8 a month, and $8 a month over uh, a year can build, we can build four homes if we have 260 people who give $8 a month. So it's really so little. $8 is like two coffees, and uh, only 260 people, which, I mean, that's crazy we can come up with. Even a high school student or a college student who may not have the money to be able to go and do a whole build might be able to be a chance of that, uh, be a part of that. So we're going to let you know this is a brand new idea, um, and so we are going to let you know how the processing will end up working for that, but just we're going to plant the seed in, in your hearts right now. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go and leave you in the hands of this handsome man, okay? Thank you, Yeah, and thank you, thank you for all the effort and everything you you do. And it's not just the fact of going and doing something and you feel good. The the reality and the truth is, um, thank you. Um, uh, is that what you're doing going down there? Is you're leaving a legacy there? It's like what you left behind, the, the, the last house that you built for, is for uh, this lady who works with uh, indigenous girls, and they actually added more girls. They don't have opportunity up in the mountains, and then she helps them. She disciples them and, and 
help them to go to school, and some of them already graduated from uh, college. And crazy things, good things are happening, and you are being part of what is going on over there, down south from you. So thank you very much, and know, know that, um, oh, I'm sorry, um, that what you're doing, it's uh, working out, and it's doing a difference, and changing the world. Um, okay, so let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity. Uh, thank you uh, because you want to use me and, uh, and you want to talk to these people, what is in your heart and what you want them to understand about who they are, why they're supposed to do, and how, they, how can they be part of your kingdom on earth. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so uh, Keith, he's going to help me to read a, a passage in 1 Corinthians 7. It's not that I don't know how to read. It's just difficult for me to read in English. And I have my wife's classes on this time, so we're going to get through it. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 17. But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches... Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not be uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it, but if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You were bought with a price, or bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Oh, did we go one more? Sorry. <coughs> Amen. That was good all by itself. But here, let's continue on. Uh, next one. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Yes. Amen. So, uh, you can see here many times the word call or calling or you're being called. Um, this is uh, a topic that we hear a lot, but I just want to divide this, this word, or I mean not the word, but the actual calling in two different type of callings which is the highest, the common, and the specific calling. Um, so I'm gonna start with the highest, because of course it's the most important one that we need to be able to do the other two. Without that one, we can try to do like the second calling, which is the common calling, and that will be just aid. Says a lot of people who helps others, I'm sorry, I'm going to, too fast, right? I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna stop a little bit and do. Um, <clears throat> so, there's uh, this first calling is uh, our calling to God. It's our relationship with God. We need uh, to understand who we are, and God, He calls us to Himself, uh, not because of any kind of circumstance. We are called to Him because He created us and we're His sons and daughters. That's the only reason. It's not because you're more beautiful, you're taller, you're shorter, or tons of different circumstances. Uh, and Paul, uh, this chapter 7, he starts uh, saying something and he says, um, sorry. For now, for the matter you wrote about, so he's responding some questions to the Corinthians. And the question that Corinthians have is like, uh, you think I can become a Christian if I'm circumcised? Or what if I'm not? And he's responding those things. What if I'm a slave? 
Can I, I have the right to be the son of God? So he's responding, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter the circumstance you are under. You are a son and daughter of God. And it's what matters. He chose you because you are his creation. It doesn't matter if you're short, if you're Mexican, if you're Indian, if you're Chinese, if you're American. It doesn't matter if you're a son or a daughter of God. Um, so these people believe those kind of things because uh, I don't know what kind of uh, culture or society they live back then. But now, today, and the kind of society and uh, culture that we live, what gives us value is what they show us on the TV or what other people tell us what is valuable. If you are not like this, uh, you're nobody. If you haven't done this, you're nobody. It doesn't matter to God what circumstance you are under. Amen? Um, so, do you think that you have the fulfillment of God in yourself, even if the circumstances that you are at, or maybe you face in the future, will change that? Um, that's a, a question that we have to answer ourselves, but um, it shouldn't be any type of circumstance. And many people blame God for many things which he has nothing to do. Um, and like for some things that are happening right now around the world and in this country, crazy people doing crazy things. Um, circumstances are hard. And, but God doesn't change his mind and his heart for you, for each one of you. Um, so, the most important thing is that uh, the value and the uh, identity comes from God, not out of anything else. So take everything else that you think that is going to make you a better person, more valuable, or with a better identity. It's not. It's God who gives you that identity. And you find that in a relationship, intimate, like intimate relationship with God. That's the only place where you're going to find it. Uh, so that's your highest call. Your highest call is to God himself. And then if you get to understand who you are and what's the value that you have as a son or daughter of God, then you can understand the common call which each one of us that believe in, uh, in the word of God will be able to do. Um, so, well, there's another passage uh, to... Yeah, that shows how God loved Jesus even before his ministry or all his miracles and all the amazing things he did before all that. In, uh, in Matthew 3, uh, in verse 17, he said, And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So... This is when uh, Jesus was baptized. And uh, I'm pretty sure God says the same about each one of you. You are my son and my beloved daughter. Why, please, I, I am well pleased. Um, so, you don't need to perform miracles. You don't need to go and preach in front of a stadium. You, you don't need to go and rescue kids from Africa. <coughs> Not that you don't have to do it, no. Not that it's necessary that for you to have value before God. Um, but the value that you have is because you're the son and daughter of God. Now, to, to be able to the, do this other thing that I'm talking about, go and preach in front of hundreds of people, go and rescue soldier kids from Africa, and go and build houses down in Mexico, and forgive your brother, for your, your sister uh, and help the poor and help the needy 
and, and support the widow and the orphan and all those different uh, things that are in the Bible are our common call. Each single one of you has this call and, and in a certain way it's a com command that the Bible tells us. So all those we we are we have to do it because it, we're called to that. And this is a call, common call that you have. And and this helps us to to do it. No, God does that to help us to do it amongst us. This is to do it for other people. I do it for my brother, for my sister, and for for the rest of the world. And uh, he also tells us to go and preach the gospel, to go to the nations, and uh, and many other other things that we find in the Bible. Um, and some of us can say, or maybe somebody, you have no idea what I have lived in my life. And I cannot forgive that person. He did so bad to me or so much things to me that I cannot forgive. Um, when you are able to understand your highest call, which is the relationship with God, you're going to be able to do this, the, this other uh, calling, which is in the Bible, you're going to be able to forgive. You're going to be able to love. And you're going to be able, be able to give and to go to the nations and to do many other things. Um, and then... We have another calling, which this is, uh, I talk about the relationship with God, the first one, the highest. Without this one, we cannot do the second one, which is the common call. We all understand, we have heard this preaching over and over and over, what we need to do for our brothers and our sisters. But there's another uh, calling, which is a, a specific calling for each one of us. And I know this, and we, each one of us know this because, or should know, each one of you have a specific gifting that God has given to you. And sometimes we fight against uh, what God has given, given to us, and we say, well, I'm not good enough in this. And, and for example, in John 21, 18 to 22. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. This is in Matthew. Uh, Jesus is calling his disciples. And uh, he tells Peter, I, I'm going to uh, make you a fisher of men. So he, he had a, as, as, a, as a job, he was a fisherman. And God comes and, and Jesus comes and he tells him, come and I'm going to make you a fisher of men. So he's giving me, uh, giving him a calling to go in and do that. And then I'll read the, the other verse later. Uh, well, no, I'm going to do it now. In John 21, 18, 22, that Peter, he, uh, Jesus died, and then uh, he, he rose, and then he came. And then uh, he was uh, with with Peter. Uh, no, Peter. I'm sorry, because I got time, so I don't have to hurry. And the other one, I, I didn't have very much time, so I had to go really fast. Um. So Peter was a fisherman, and then and then Jesus tells him, "I'm gonna turn you or make you fisher of men." And then and then he denies Jesus before he was crucified. And then Jesus dies, and then he and he rises, and then and then he is in the beach, and Peter at night he's saying, "You know what? I think I'm gonna go to my old job because I'm nobody." So he goes to the to the boat, and then he throws the net, and then they're fishing all night, and nothing happens. And then in the morning, there's Jesus at the beach, and he he tells him, "Hey, I think you should turn the." Uh, Throw the, the net in the other side. And then, boom, they got a bunch of fish. And then uh, John says, oh, that's Jesus. And, and Peter, he runs out of the boat. 
And then he goes and hogs Jesus. And then uh, they have breakfast. And, and then he, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? And he's like, of course I love you. I love you. And he's like, well, I want you to be the shepherd of my sheep. And then he, tell, he tells, tells him this three times. Because he, he denied him three times. So some, something symbolic there. But my point here is, is that Jesus gave a calling to Peter before. And Peter, he wanted to go away from that and be, do whatever he was doing before, what gave him identity. And, um, and then Jesus says, no, no, no. I called you to be a fisherman, and I called you to pastor my sheep. So many times we, uh, we try to do some other things that God is not calling us to do. And we think that it's going to give us identity and it's going to make us better. That's not true. God gave you something specific for you to do. And you know what it is. And then if you, if you have denied that, go to Jesus and ask him, Lord, what is my calling? What is my specific calling? Now, in, in the last, uh, in the first service, they were singing a song, or we were singing a song. It says, float the earth with your kingdom. Uh, and this song, it says, float the earth with your kingdom. <coughs> My question is, uh, where is the kingdom? What's the kingdom? What, what is? It's, it's going to come and a cloud and it's going to land in, in earth? No, it's not like that. The kingdom of heaven is in you. You are the kingdom of heaven. So, you need to be that, that light and that kingdom in heaven. Uh, and you need to shine for who you are and who you, who you have been called. Um, and so, with this, uh, that, um, in, in the fourth century, it was... Uh, the church, up to the 4th century, it was kind of okay, and then Christianity became legal, and, and it started twisting a little bit, and then a guy called Eusebius, he, uh, he brought an idea of the only job that matters is if you're a preacher, if you're a priest, if you're a monk, if you're a nun, or only the... Clergy, <coughs> only if you were part of that group, your job mattered. The rest of the jobs, it didn't matter. It didn't matter if you were a farmer, a carpenter, a mother, a, a baker, all those things. And that that lie remained for a thousand years until the reformers came. And the reformers came with a, a theology of vocation. Uh, somebody have ever heard that before? Well, the theology of vocation, and uh, who, what do I understand about vocation? What's vocation? It's a job, right? Oh, it's my job. Well, the word vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, which means to hear the voice. So that's a vocation. You need to hear the voice of God for what you're supposed to do with your life. So there's different callings. Some, some of them mix. Like, for example, an evangelist. The Bible tells us that we need to go and evangelize and preach the word. And, uh, and some people are evangelists and they are missionaries out in the field. And, uh, or for example, uh, my friend Kurt. Somebody help me with that. Uh -huh. yeah. Kim. Um, uh, yesterday, this this is, I am telling you this story because that this happened yesterday. He's telling me uh, that he he was coming from a old lady that was struggling with a, a ramp and she needed a beam or something, and then she hired another guy and he was doing a horrible job, and uh, he. Anybody of you know Kurt? He is an amazing carpenter. 
And if you don't know, you can you should hire him. Um, and but the end of the story is that all he did all this and that. And the lady, she said, Oh, I'm so happy that you did it. It's so good and you're helping me. And then I, I said I called him because we were going golfing. Ooh, I golfed after two years yesterday. And I did very very bad. But <laughs> I was very happy. It's really beautiful the, the course. Uh, and and then he said, Oh, it's my friend from Mexico. And she's like, What do you mean Mexico? Oh, I built houses. Ah, how, how can I can I be part of this? And uh, so he can tell you more of the story. But it's really cool how his job, his vocation, is part of bringing the heaven on earth. And it seems like, ah, that, that, that's not very important. Well, it's very important. If you do your job with excellence, with beauty, with honesty, with integrity, that is heaven on earth. So whatever you do, and then whatever calling, specific calling is giving you and gifts, you do it with excellence, with beauty, with honesty, and with integrity. And you're going to reflect the kingdom of God like her did yesterday. Amen? Amen. Um, so imagine God appears to you and he tells you, my son, my daughter, I want you to be a mechanic. I want you to be a baker or a mom at home. Would you say, what? Oh, I want to go to the nations. I want to be a missionary. Would you say that to God? If he's calling you to do that, well, maybe some of us will. Or say, you know what? I want to become a president because I want to change this country. So sometimes we think that positions or <coughs> some kind of vocation or jobs are better than uh, than what God had given to us. And nothing is better than God calling you to whatever it is. That what matters and what is important is who is calling you. It's not the job by itself. So uh, we, we live in a society where the highest you get into a job you're, you're better and you're successful. Ah, that's a lie. The truth is that if God chose you to do something, do it with excellence. And if, if he takes you wherever he takes you, I'm not saying that you, you can become a manager or a president. No, no, if God is calling you to do that, do it with excellence, with, with fear of the Lord, and uh, do it because he is calling you. It's not that you're trying to reach your goals. It's not about you. It's about God's kingdom. And that's extending the kingdom of God. Understanding your specific call. Amen? Amen. Um, so, um, yeah, so that was this guy, Wilbur Wilberforce, in the 1800s. He was a, an English politician. And then uh, he got to meet the Lord, and and he was so passionate about the Lord that he wanted to leave all his career behind, and he wanted to become a priest or um, a pastor. And then and he's fighting there. He's like, Lord, I want to serve you with everything I am, and I just want to become a, a, a pastor. And then he goes and talks to his uh, uh, pastor. I said, well, what should I do? Should I leave politics and, and become a, a pastor because I want to serve God? And then he's like, well, go and ask the Lord. I cannot give you that answer. So that was the best advice that he could have given. And then, uh, so he goes and, and wrestles with God. And um, he decides to stay in politics. Well, this guy... Uh, he got to start getting very passionate because the value of lives and people. And uh, he did his first paper to the government. I don't know how you call it. To change the law. Uh, in 1781. Um, and he was against slavery. 
and then uh, he was, of course, he was defeated because uh, slavery was one of the pillars, like economic pillars of England. So nobody wanted to, that to collapse. And then, and then next year he did it again, next year he did it again. And then 30 years, and then 40 years, 52 years, and he died. And after, a month after he died, the law passed and slavery was abolished. Uh, and, and this story really, really gets me because this guy was part of changing history. And I know that each one of us can change history if we're obedient to God. And you don't have to be a politician. There's, there's other people that uh, nobody knows and they have done things that even till today remain. Um, so we don't have to be successful before our society. We have to focus into what God is calling us. So we need, well, going back, we need to understand who we are and what's our value. God gives us the value. Not the society, not what other people think or what uh, is in the status you have money or not, or who you are, or what race you are, or, or what uh, country you are, nothing of that. We need to understand that first. And then we understand the other, the, the, thing, the, the things that God tells us to do in the Bible. And then if you understand your specific calling, um, you can become a history changer. Amen. Amen. So, that's my prayer, that each one of us understand what's, what we're supposed to do. And uh, I hear the other day that somebody say, you want to change the world? Go and love your family. Start there. And I assure you, if we bring heaven to earth through our own lives, and, and we align with God in this, we're going to change the world. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> let me pray. Lord, thank you very much for, for who you are and for the amazing, unbelievable love that you have for us. That you died for us. Yeah. And uh, it didn't stop there. You, you want us to be your light. You want us to be heaven on earth. And you chose each one of us. Lord, I ask you to show us what we're supposed to do with our lives. And uh, that we don't have to be anybody important. If it's loving my family, I'm going to go and love my family. And if it's going to the nations... I'm going to go to the nations. But Lord, I ask you to give vocation to speak to each one of my brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Hey, why don't we put our hands together? Amen. Edgar, you're another one of those preachers that my thumbs are tired from typing so many notations on my phone. Um, but wow, what a, what a fresh word from the Lord. The highest, the common, and the specific calling of God upon our lives. Just uh, what a good word. Anyway, um, it's a beautiful day out there. And Jesus Christ died and rose. And so because of that, we're able to have an awesome day. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your families. Let's go and be the light of Christ. Amen? Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Thank you.